it's Angela Hockman, your host of In the Kitchen on STL TV. Now, you know, on this show, we work to give you just a little glimpse into our wildly impressive food scene in St. Louis. So today, you are in for a treat, okay? You've heard of the new 21C Museum Hotel, right? Used to be an old YMCA. Now it's renovated into this amazing, gorgeous hotel and restaurant. So we thought who better to bring the executive chef of the restaurant inside of that hotel called Idol Wolf. We brought on executive chef Matthew Joaday. How's it going, chef? It's going good. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me on. Oh, well, thanks for leaving that kitchen to come hang out in our kitchen here. I got to get started asking. There was so much going on in front of me. <laughs> what are we going to make today? So we're uh, doing a classic dish called gambas ajillo, okay. which is basically just garlic shrimp. It's just uh, jazzed up with a little Yum. bit of clabber and chili and some brandy. OK. So. Okay, so this restaurant, I want to just talk a, a little bit about Idle Wolf. Specializes in Spanish cuisine, from the drinks to the tapas style, and you also do have larger size entrees. But where did this exact recipe come from? So this is probably you know one of the most classic Spanish tapas dishes out there. Um, so this is kind of why we chose this dish, but it's also a very relatable dish. Yeah, you know, it's just garlic shrimp. Um, you know, it's jazzed up a little bit, but. At the end of the day, it's a it's a very simple recipe to put together, and but at the same time, very very delicious. Simple so. to you <laughs> it may not be simple to all of you, but yeah. if you are watching and if you are feeling so ambitious, we kindly threw the recipe up on the screen. So if you want to make it at home, go for it. If you want to let the pros do it, which is always what I prefer, then that's what I would highly suggest. So I know you said it's a simple dish, yeah. and it's a basic dish, but. I feel like Idle Wolf just puts this epic twist on everything. So why don't we get started? I'd love to yeah. get some shrimp sizzling. It just, everything smells so good. Yeah. <laughs> I can't contain myself. So I mean, for this dish, it's, um, you know, we start out with marinating the shrimp. Um, we're using Argentinian red shrimp, which oh. just have a nice plumpness to them. They're sweet um, and they go over really, really well. But any shrimp that you like works well. Okay. Um, we use a 16, 20 shrimp. Um, which just relates to the size of it. Um, but yeah, I think it's a kind of garlic perfect. Garlic smells amazing. Yeah. So yeah, we start out with a little bit of garlic in okay. there. Um, we're adding a little bit of parsley. Yum. Um, we're adding some Calabrian chili, which adds like a nice little spice, but it also adds a little bit of sweetness to it as well. How about heat? On a heat, heatometer, <laughs> where, does, where does that fall? To me, it's probably about a medium size, uh, medium okay. amount of heat. Okay. Um, I'm not too big on things that just overpower with that heat. Yeah, um, I understand. So, so it balances out really well. So we have the smoked paprika, we have garlic, we have parsley, um, olive oil, which is kind of a main staple of a lot of oh, Spanish yeah. dishes. So we use a nice Albertania olive oil. Um, so. Oh my goodness, yum. It's just a very simple of kind of throwing those things together. Mm -hmm. So you get a nice little mix and we'll add. Oh, it smells so good. Yeah. Nice it's fragrance. funny, I would have thought the garlic would overpower in smell, but I'm really smelling that olive oil. Yeah, no, I mean, I think using a good around. good olive oil that has nice flavor to it, mm -hmm. um, everything balances each other out really well in this dish. So were you part of bringing this specific dish to the menu? I'm just so curious about your involvement with developing the menu. Yeah, so I came on probably about eight months before the actual opening of the restaurant. Um, and they gave me free reign on, on kind of writing out a menu and, and kind of seeing what worked best. Um, and so we tried to root it in a lot of classic Spanish dishes or mm -hmm. flavors, um, but we definitely wanted to show off, you know, a lot of the local produce that St. Louis has. So a lot of our dishes will focus on whatever's seasonal or whatever is available at the time. Amazing. Um, and we mix it in with dishes that that have these Spanish roots. So. That's really impressive that you they gave you free reign because you have the resume to back it up. You worked under, you know, your buddy Gerard Kraft for a while. You worked at Taste, you were at Niche. You opened your own restaurant after that. Talk a little bit about Reed's. Yeah, so I opened up Reed's American Table in 2014 and it was kind of an ambitious venture where we, we wanted to make something that was a local neighborhood restaurant, sure. but at the same time, you know, had really good coffee program, had a really good wine program. Um, and so it was a chance for me to, to grow a lot and, and play around with dishes and food that, that I really liked. There yeah. was definitely some Spanish influence to that menu, but also it was a very eclectic menu. Um, so yeah, it was a lot of fun and, and allowed me to grow. And 
you know, working with Gerard gave me a good good base in, in cooking. Mean, and Yeah, it doesn't get better than that, so, yeah, I don't think, I, in the I St. Louis lucky. scene. So Reed's was a standalone restaurant, as were Gerard Crafts. Now, Idle Wolf is located inside of a hotel. How does that sort of change your perspective and when you're developing these menu items and things like that? Because you've got to appeal to like a different audience, right? Travelers, how yeah. does that work? Yeah, you know, when we had Reed's and, and working with Gerard, you know, we had out-of-town guests for sure, but the majority of people that we were servicing were just local St. Louis guests and yeah. local neighborhood restaurants. And, you know, this is a lot bigger of an operation. We have big banquet operation going on. We have a breakfast, lunch cafe, and, yeah, the hotel is filled with, with out-of-town guests. I and mean, so we wanted yes. to make something that was local and, and still hit that neighborhood restaurant vibe. Right. But you got to appeal to a lot broader of an audience. So. Sure, and, and this is not just any hotel. I want to be clear, there is such an art influence in the 21C. So can you talk a little bit about how in your mind, food and art, how do they go together? No, I, I think they're kind of a, a natural match mm -hmm. um, on some level, food and in the kind of cliche way of saying it, it is art in its own right. But Oh, absolutely. Um, I can tell by looking at all these beautiful, bold colors. Yes, food is art. Yeah, but I mean, it, it's people who are passionate about you know, providing an experience to people mm -hmm. and and offering them something that is fun to eat, fun to look at, yeah. um, and just you're able to go out and have an entertaining evening. Absolutely. Um, and, and to me, being able to walk around a hotel and see how many amazing artists there are, um, and then sit down and have a meal afterwards, it, it makes for a full night, which is, I think, a very awesome experience. That's so interesting and fulfilling, and it sounds like just by walking through the art, you can get inspired. Yeah. So let's pause right there, please, Chef. Uh, I, I could smell that all day. But we are going to take a very quick break. When we come back, we're going to finish up this amazing and delicious and delectable garlic shrimp dish that you can only find at Idle Wolf. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Thanks so much for joining us again. Now, when we left off, my new friend, Chef Matt from Idlewolf and I were making gambo sahio, which is essentially garlic shrimp. But of course, you know he's gonna put a twist on it. So, Chef, let's go ahead and get that shrimp going because I am hungry. Awesome. So yeah, we're gonna get the, the pan heated up to medium. Once okay. we let the, the shrimp kind of marinate for, for a little while, it should be good to go. So I have you hand me the, the olive oil. Olive oil, I'm just gonna take one more smell before. So yeah. good. So we're gonna do a healthy amount of olive oil, enough to cover cover the bottom of the pan here. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. And it, it makes for a perfect little sauce when we're when we're done with it. Um, you know, you knew I was a sauce girl. I'm like, I need to dip something in something. Right. So what else? So we'll get the the garlic. Okay. We'll go in with that next. You cannot waste one clove of that. Yes. So we'll get all the garlic in there and just a nice medium heat, so Perfect. it has a nice little sizzle and kind of bloom out the garlic. Okay. Um, and then bloom it out. Is that a is that a culinary phrase? I'm yeah, the just last kinda to know. Letting those flavors of the garlic kind of permeate into the, the oil. Ooh. And then we're gonna go in with the, the shrimp. Um, I don't like to have the pan get too hot. Um, the the shrimp will cook quick. Okay. So we just kind of want to get them down it in there. Do a lot of people order this as their entree, or do some people start with this as an appetizer, perhaps, for the table? I think the fun thing about Spanish dining and, and what we try to take advantage of at Idle Wolf is this kind of shared experience of dining. Yes. So ordering a few small plates, and I mean, you can, we have a whole top of section of the menu that's broken into to veg dishes, mm -hmm. seafood dishes, meat dishes. So, I mean, 
you and your dinner guests can come out and order three or four plates and, and that's favorite. dinner. Um, we do have large plates and we do have those options. Perfect. But I think it's fun. Everything is made to share. That's so. what I'm talking. I'm Italian, so like everything is family style. <laughs> That's just how we roll. And I love the idea that you can start with some small plates and then just gradually add to it as the night goes on, depending how hungry you are. So give us a few more uh, examples of what else people can find on your very eclectic and delightful menu. Yeah, I think some of the favorites that have popped out so far, we have a chorizo roasted hen of the wood mushroom. Um, we use a nice chorizo butter. We get hen of the wood mushrooms from a local mushroom farmer, Ozark Forest Mushrooms. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Bull Rush, I think, is yeah, a friend yeah. of theirs too, sure. Yeah. No, we've used them for a long time. And so, um, that's probably one of the favorites. We do a broccolini dish that has a clavering chili and anchovy relish. Um, we, of course, paella is like one of the most well-known Spanish dishes. Yes. And we, we sell a ton of paella. Do you, um, a seafood paella? Or? Yeah, we're doing kind of the classic seafood paella, so okay. mussels, shrimp. Um, a little bit of calamari. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's a great dish. Well, what is your favorite? Not only to make, but to eat. So it's the end of a long day. The night is yours now. You can whip up whatever you want. What's cooking for you? Yeah, I mean, I, I have to say that gambas I here, for, for being a simple, easy dish, is probably <laughs> one of my favorite to eat all the time. Is that why we brought it today? Yeah, You're like, you know, I'm really I craving to, this, Well, I, as am I. I just choose my favorite. And so. you have a very impressive um, cocktail menu too. Besides the wines, of course, I can picture a good like Tempranillo or Rioja or something fun like that, but do you work to create dishes that pair well with these cocktails? Yeah, I think, you know, the, the cocktails are very much part of the dining experience and so you want those things to pair well and so as they come up with, with uh, cocktails, we'll figure out what on the menu it goes well with. So, you you know, know, people on your Instagram are going nuts over this, is it coconut clarified daiquiri? Yeah, yeah. Clarify that for me. I've never even heard of that. So yeah, they're doing a clarified um, lime juice with coconut milk. And yeah, it's, it, it kind of hits all the notes that you wanted for something different and fun. Okay. But at the same time, um, it has all those classic flavors. Like what would you, for example, pair with this? I'm asking for a friend for obvious reasons. Yeah, no. So for this one, um, I mean, mm. sherry goes really well with it, and sherries are really well known throughout Spain. Um, so there's a lot of really good sherries, but I mean, a, uh, a basic cocktail, a uh, sangria. We do a few different sangrias. Yes. Um, Talk about do. what makes your sangria unique. Well, they're doing them and letting them marinate. Um, they're not doing just like the quick, rushed kind of sangria as yeah. we let them sit overnight a good 24 hours at least to make sure that all those flavors meld really well. Oh um, wow, all the fruit, everything is sitting and marinating for a good day. Yeah, yeah, oh, at wow. least. So last thing we put in there, just so you guys see, um, we throw the brandy in the finish and it just kind of rounds out that sauce. I'm assuming this is um, the brandy? No, we just got it right here. So oh. this is just a little extra of the, the marinade that we have oh, there. Oh, a little extra, you can never have enough extra. So, and I can't help but notice this tower of bread in front of me. Um, where do you get this bread or do you make it? So bread is extremely important, I think, to eating all these tapas dishes that mm -hmm. come out. Um, you end up with this really wonderful sauce. And so we get bread from Union Loafers. Yes, um, shout out to Union Loafers. Are you ready for the bread now or no? Yeah, so once oh our shrimp gosh. have, we, we turn them over once we get the kind of sauce put together. Um, we'll kind of spoon the shrimp into the dish. Um, and we de definitely don't want to waste this sauce, so. We do not waste one thing ever in the kitchen or in my house. But no, I'm with you. Any good bread to sort of dip in and get that sauce. Yeah, no, nothing it, goes to waste. It makes it perfect, so. <laughs> we'll do the shrimp in the dish, and then I'm just gonna kind of spoon over. That's and pour right. over the excess. Get that sauce on there, chef. Sauce oh my goodness. Top. This looks and smells. So good, and it was fast too. Yeah, no, it, it's why it makes it such a fun just to do at home. Um, that it's it's easy, it's fast, you can put it together for yourself or for a big group if you have a party. Um, we'll kind of finish with a little bit of parsley okay. over the top. Do you do a lot of big parties at uh, Ida Wolf? Yeah, we, we have a private dining room, which is great for parties of up to 14. But cool. then, you know, we also will, will accommodate big groups in our uh, banquet halls upstairs. Okay. So, 
Well, I don't know what you're gonna eat. <laughs> I know this is your favorite, so I guess I'll share. I mean, you did the majority of the work, uh, so uh, uh, let's give this a shot. Oh, this looks so good. Here we go. Yum. Cheers. <laughs> oh my, chef. I'm just gonna pull this a little bit more towards me. I guess you can have the bread too. This was outstanding. It, the, the beauty of it is I literally taste every single ingredient, but at different times, which I think is such a gift because you don't want to have this like mashup of flavors. You just want it all to flow together, which it does. For a simple of a dish and with a lot of Spanish food, it's really simple, but the flavors that pop out are amazing. Pretty amazing. Job well done. Chef Thank Matthew you. from Idle Wolf. We want to make sure that you guys get to experience Idle Wolf for yourself. So head downtown. They are located in the beautiful and very artsy 21C Museum Hotel right down there on Locust. Go to Open Table. That's how you're going to get a reservation. They are not required, but Chef did say they are highly recommended. Based on the way this tastes, I would say get your reservation now. Follow them on social. There's some really fun. Whoever does your social gets a gold star. Uh, lots of good stuff going on there. Guys, this is the new place. I see what everybody's talking about. Thank you. Congratulations on a job well done. Uh, sky's the limit for you, chef. I've seen where you started, where you are now. This is just delightful. Guys, that is going to do it on another delicious episode of In the Kitchen. Now on the next show, you're gonna wanna tune in because we've got crushed red. We are gonna be whipping up some uh, pizza and salad. Who doesn't like that? So make sure when you are online, you check out STL TV on all of our social media channels, okay? We are everywhere. There's also the good old fashioned website. However, if you are out and about eating at a great local restaurant thinking they could be a good guest, drop us a note. That's what our great Facebook page is all about. We want to hear from you. We want to provide you with all the dishes that make St. Louis such a unique culinary scene. All right, friends, I got to eat some food here. That's going to do it on another episode. I'm Angela Hockman. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.